Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Greedy Tech and these are the 40 hidden tips and tricks on your Lenovo Zook Z1 or else we can simply call it Z1 from now on. So guys, this is the Zook Z1 and let's get started. Firstly, let's enable the advanced options from the about page. So just go to the settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and now select about phone. Now make sure you enable the advanced mode option. So once you enable that toggle, you will be able to find additional settings like status bar and notification drawer in the settings. So once you do that, enable the developer options by going to the about page, scroll down to the bottom, click build number at least seven times to enable the developer options. Now go back, you will find developer options just above the about phone. Just click that and make sure you enable the advanced reboot option. This is the toggle. So once you enable that, if you go to reboot, you'll get these additional four options. Now you can do a reboot or do a soft reboot which is a faster version of the reboot you can directly go to the recovery or the bootloader right from here now let's go back now let me just set up a fingerprint lock for this device so go to the settings select lock screen and fingerprint select the first option now if you want to unlock your device using the fingerprint just select the last option fingerprint now you need to give a backup password I'll go with the pattern 3x3 three three. continue and now I can choose to display the notifications on the lock screen or not I'll go with the default option now I have already configured some fingerprints so I'll just add a new one it's asking to find where the fingerprint scanner is on the device so we have it over here so let me just add my index finger you need to literally press this fingerprint scanner 20 times for it to record. By the way guys, I am using a new camera so if anything is out of focus, please bear with me. Now if I lock this device, I cannot unlock the device directly using the fingerprint scanner because firstly I need to wake the device then only I will be able to unlock it. So just hit the power button and then place the finger on the fingerprint scanner to unlock the device and the best thing is that you can unlock this device in any angle as you can see I have recorded my finger only in this angle but I was able to unlock it even in this angle so that's something I really like about this fingerprint scanner by the way do you know that this fingerprint scanner is also a home button unfortunately it's not a capacity button like the MI5 you need to press it hard to go to the home screen now we are in the Google Chrome. Now let me just press this button. And now we are in the home screen. Besides that, we have the capacity buttons down below over here. And if we don't want to use them, we can always go with the on screen buttons. I'll show you how to activate those in a second. Now let's go tweak the status bar settings. Now if we go to settings, scroll down a little bit, you will find the status bar option. Just select that. And now we can change the clock style add a am or pm to the clock we can change the battery status style so currently it's a bar now let me just change it to circle now we have a circular battery bar we can choose to display the battery percentage beside the icon next we can change the brightness of the screen using the status bar we can simply swipe over the status bar to change the brightness you need to enable this toggle to do that so let me just change the brightness now So it is that simple and very convenient to use. Next, if you want to show the notification count on the status bar, you need to enable this toggle. Now let's go back and select notification drawer. So this is the notification drawer and we can tweak how this bar appears. As you can see, there are a lot of notification toggles over here and I'll just show you in a minute how to add or remove these toggles. So firstly, select quick pull down. So by default, so I have set it to right and I don't know if it is off by default or not. If I swipe the status bar down from the center, I'll just go to the notification area. But if I swipe it from the right corner, I'll directly go to the notification toggles. So that's the quick pull down feature. Next we can change the notification toggles over here in this option. So these are all my notification toggles. I can add or remove notification toggles from here. So to add a new one, just click the plus button and select the 
toggle that you want to add. Now to remove it, just press and hold it and go over delete and go over delete to delete it. Now we can enlarge the first two rows or have it as the same. Now if you enable this option or enable this toggle, the first two notification toggles will be enlarged. So if that's something that you regularly use, then you might want to use that or else to save space, you can disable this option. In the notification area, we can even see the brightness slider. If you don't want to see that, simply disable this toggle and it will be removed. I personally like to keep it there. So I'll just enable that. Next, if you go to the location toggle, if you click on it, it will be enabled or disabled. But if you want advanced location features, you need to enable this toggle. Now we, now when we click on this toggle, we get additional options to set it to battery saving, device only or high accuracy. I can disable the toggle from there too. Now let's go back. Now let me just show you how to switch between the on-screen buttons and the navigation and the capacitor buttons. Just in the settings select buttons. There we have it. So to use the on-screen buttons enable this toggle and if you disable that your capacitor buttons will be enabled. These are the on-screen buttons. The home button, this home button is really hard to press. That's why I would suggest you to use the on-screen buttons. When we are using the on-screen buttons, we don't have a lot of customization options, but when we disable them, we can tweak these capacitor buttons for single press, double tap and long press. If you want to end calls using the power button, you need to enable this toggle. And every time you finish talking to a person, you just click the power button to end the call. I usually enable this option in my parents phone because most of the time they forget to end the calls. So anyway, if you go to the power menu, you can tweak this. So if you want to add a shortcut to take a screenshot in the power menu, just click here. So let me just disable that and show you the power menu. Just press and hold the power button and you'll get the power menu. So if I enable this toggle, now when I press the power button, I get the option to take the screenshot in the power menu. So I just took a screenshot. By the way, if you want to take a screenshot on this device, simply press volume down and power button both at the same time. And there you go. He took a screenshot. Now let's go back. Now let me just show you how you can change the lock screen shortcuts. By the way, this is the lock screen and, and we have two shortcuts over here. So this is for the phone dialer and this is for the camera and you can simply swipe like that and unlock the device to quickly open the app. If you don't have a lock screen, if you don't have a lock screen, it will immediately go to the app. I'm pretty sure camera should directly open up. So as you can see, it is a very easy way to open apps. Now we can change these shortcuts on the lock screen by going to the settings. In the settings, scroll down and select lock screen and now select lock screen shortcuts. Now you can change the left shortcut or the right shortcut. I usually prefer to use the right shortcut. So I'll just change the left shortcut. Now I can go with the default or disable the shortcut or select any other application. So I can select any of these. If I want to select an application, I'll select apps. It will just search through all my apps and list them now. There are a lot of apps installed on this device. That's why it took so much time. So I can choose any one of these apps as a shortcut. Now let's go back. Next, I will show you how you can change the LED notification light on this device. Just go to display and lights, scroll down to the bottom. In the battery light, you can change how the LED notification color changes according to your battery state. So when the battery is low, you'll get a red LED. I hope you can see this red LED button because I have about 6% of battery life. Next, it will show yellow color when the device is charging and it will show green color when the device is fully charged. If you enable this option pulse if battery low, the LED will just come and go, come and go. If I disable that, it should probably stay there for a while. I don't know why it stopped. So anyway, let's go back. And now if you want to change the LED notification color based on the application, we can go to notification light and select use custom values. We can specify a specific color for missed calls and for voicemail. Now to set a specific LED color for an application, say green color for WhatsApp. Let's select the plus button over here. Select the application. I guess I don't have WhatsApp on this device. 
सो लेट मी जस्ट सेट अ कलर फॉर जी मेल और पुश बुलेट सो आई एम गन सेट अ कस्टम वैल्यू और कस्टम कलर फॉर पुश बुलेट नोटिफिकेशन आई एम गन सेलेक्ट ग्रीन एंड नाउ एवरी टाइम आई गेट अ नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम पुश बुलेट आई एल गेट अ ग्रीन एल ई डी नोटिफिकेशन सो इन दिस वे वी कैन ईजीली कॉन्फिगर द एल ई डी नोटिफिकेशन लाइट इन द डिस्प्ले सेटिंग्स वी कैन चूज टू इनेबल डबल टैप टू वेक एंड डबल टैप टू स्लीप सो एज यू कैन सी आई हैव ऑलरेडी इनेबल दीज टॉगल्स लेट मी जस्ट डबल टैप द स्टेटस बार टू पुट द डिवाइस टू स्लीप नॉट द डिवाइस इज स्लीप और लॉक्ड नाउ इफ आई डबल टैप ऑन द स्क्रीन इट विल वेक अप द डिवाइस वेल इट्स नॉट वर्किंग टू इट्स बेस्ट एंड आई एम वेरी लो ऑन बैटरी दैट्स वाई इट्स नॉट वर्किंग So anyway it does work and even though the accuracy isn't very good it still works you have the double tap to wake and double tap to sleep options over here next in the display and light settings we have the option to enable or disable adapt to brightness or auto brightness so if i enable that toggle it will change the brightness based on my surrounding and we have something called as live display or else you can even call it screen saver or daydream mode Next we have an option called live display so if you enable this option it will change the color of the display based on the time so at night time it will give you a warmer color and reduce the blues so that it doesn't affect your eyes let me just enable this and show you a quick demonstration so currently it is set to automatic and as you can see there is a warmer color or it seems like the display has some kind of a tint on it This kind of a display mode is actually very good for your eyes when you use your device at night time because it reduces the blue color in the light and I have read somewhere that the blue color in the light actually prevents you from sleeping early. So anyway it's a nice feature just enable it and use it. You can even automate it or completely turn it off. You have three modes for this live display. One is off, one is night, the one that you are seeing now. Next we have outdoor bright sun so it will simply increase the brightness of this display and it will be much more easy to see in direct sunlight and off and automatic which changes the temperature of the display based on the time i'm just disabling it for now next we have a toggle for the battery modes we have three modes balance high performance and battery saver if i press and hold this toggles i'll go to the battery section We can also come to the same place from settings. Just go to the settings and select battery. Now we have the battery modes over here. We have three modes: power saver, balance, and performance. So when you're gaming and if you think that your games are lagging a little bit, just enable the performance mode. Just enable the performance mode, and after you are done, disable it. Now let's go back. Now let me just show you how to change themes. Just go to the themes from the settings, or you can even use the themes app. These are the themes that are currently installed on my device. Out of the box, you have two themes pre-installed and this is the theme that I've recently downloaded. Let me just do that to install or apply this theme. So it just takes some time to apply the theme. I hope you remember how my device looked just few minutes ago because it's going to change completely now. Everything will be very dark. it takes some time to load the home screen so let me just show you the other aspects of the phone the notification toggles the colors the icons have been changed now let me just go to the settings and now you can see the background in the settings and the icons have been changed along with the colors so in this way we can easily change the themes of our phone the best thing about the cyanogen os besides the cyanogen mod is that we have app themer So if I select this option I can go to any app for example the phone dialer and change the theme of this particular app so let me just select that and I have three themes so I'll go with the system theme and it will change the theme of this particular application and we are done with this now if I go to home screen or check out the notification area we can see that we still have the old theme but if we open the phone dialer we get the stock theme applied to this So this is one of the cool features of Cyanogen OS. So finally guys we have something called as audio effects which is an equalizer for Cyanogen based drums. If you like tweaking your audio to your preferences just enable this toggle and tweak it to your liking. If you don't know how to tweak it you can go with the pre-installed modes. 
So there you have it guys, these are all the tips and tricks that I want to quickly share with you. There are, well, there are a lot of them and most of them you can find it in other Cyanogen based drums, but there are a few new things in this device too. So that's it for this video guys. If you have any more doubts, do let me know by commenting below this video. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this.